Thank you for joining me today for a look at the 3D Experience platform and what can be accomplished with SOLIDWORKS connected to the cloud. In case you haven't heard, the 3D Experience is a cloud environment which connects all Dassault Systems products. You've probably already noticed a shift to cloud architecture in software such as Microsoft Office 365 and OneDrive. We've all grown accustomed to the speed and ease of use of our smartphones, and today's technology and internet bandwidth make it possible to extend this behavior to other software. Now, SOLIDWORKS users are already used to the ease of connected data. When you make a design change, that change is automatically reflected everywhere that design is used, allowing more processes to be done in parallel. The 3D experience fundamentally extends this to include data management, providing rev control and data storage while eliminating the possibility of losing or overriding work. This ensures that everyone is accessing the right data at the right time. The technology shift to the cloud also reduces overhead like infrastructure and IT costs. It's extremely simple to set up and deploy and it allows access from any internet connection. It simplifies collaboration and it integrates at the core level data storage and data management. Now the current tool set is huge and it includes products that do require a local installation like SOLIDWORKS to products that are 100% cloud and a range of tools in between. I'm going to try to keep things simple today by focusing just on tools for engineering. To do this, I'm going to be working with a set of tools that come bundled together in three easy offerings. Now, this is the same SOLIDWORKS that we all know and love connected to the cloud with some additional tools for collaboration, data management, there's even additional cloud design tools as well. So as I work with SOLIDWORKS Connected and other 3D experience tools such as XDesign and XShape, I want you to pay attention to the data management and the collaboration tools that are integrated along the way. The geometries I'll be working with belong to an existing 3D experience SOLIDWORKS customer named Biodapt who designs high-performance prosthetic components for action sports and other athletic activities. This is a really amazing company, so without further ado, let's jump over into my web browser and see what a 3D experience setup might look like for one of their engineers. The 3D experience is accessed through any device with a web browser and provides fully customizable dashboards for your tools. Dashboards can be thought of as your project homepage where there are tools available to store and manage, even view and markup designs. Here I've set up a dashboard with a community on the left where I can share information in real time just like any social media tool. On the right, I've got access to my commonly used files and I've even got a viewer open so I can mark up and measure different CAD files. If we take a look at this post in the community, I can see that there's currently an issue with too much deflection around a pin in the lower end of this knee assembly. There's also a range of motion issue at the top side and I need to work on both of these. To give you an idea of how tightly integrated 3D Experience and SOLIDWORKS is, I'm just going to drag and drop from any one of my 3D Experience windows straight into SOLIDWORKS. Taking a look at the existing design, I can see indeed the lower bracket does not incorporate the pin. It's about 65 by 25 by 40 in dimensions. This gives me a starting point, so let's go ahead and delete the existing design, the old lower bracket and the pin, and start up something completely new. Here I'm just going to make use of traditional SOLIDWORKS templates and start up a new part. Now if you're new to the SOLIDWORKS interface, one thing I'd like to point out is to pay attention how tools are offered to me right by my mouse. SOLIDWORKS is essentially reading what I'm doing and offering me the best tool for the job. And as I use these to do things like add dimensions to my sketch, all I have to do is notice the lines that turn from blue to black to know that I'm fully defined and I haven't forgotten any dimensions. Now I've incorporated my 25 by 65. I simply need to extrude this out to that 40 dimension. Snapping to the ruler makes that easy. And I actually like to design around a mid plane. I like to keep the origin in the middle and that's just one right click away. Now of course uh, it's a pretty simple shape, let's add some fillets to it and automatically a selection tool is there to help me choose all of the edges in one click. The overall shape is done but I need to add some holes for hardware and these are things that are going to match up with standard size hardware so I've got a tool for the job called the hole wizard. 
Here I can take care of any type of hole, really. Counter bores, countered sinks, dowel holes, or I can save favorite sizes. I'm really making a, a screw clearance hole here, and I've saved that in the past to allow near and far side countersink of 14 millimeters. And positioning the hole is as simple as placing points on a sketch. Here I'll add the two points, but again, I like to fully define what's happening here so I can ensure that I didn't forget any dimensions, which is as simple as adding relationships to make these point horizontal and firing up my dimension tool to add what's remaining to turn those points from blue to black. For my design intent, I'll add this 10 millimeters from the edge and 12 and a half was already set from the bottom. Either one of my holes is just gonna be 45 degrees apart in separation. One green check not only builds this geometry, but gives me all of the manufacturing info I would need to put that hardware into assemblies or properly call it out in a drawing. Now, this actually looks a lot like the old one, so I need to add an additional sketch to start incorporating that lower pin. Now, I'm gonna use the front plane again and design inside the middle of the part, and notice how I can do things like transition from a line to an arc inside the same tool. I'll just snap to the existing geometry making automatic relationships and add a few more relationships to ensure I keep tangency and vertical lines. I can even borrow edges from the existing part, simply convert those entities into my sketch, and then I'll just trim them up and get rid of the extra overhang here that I don't need. SolidWorks makes it easy to know that I've enclosed an area that's ready to extrude by shading it in. And to be a good detailed CAD modeler, I always recommend fully defining the sketches. So now that I've got it to maintain a nice shape, I'll just add a few dimensions to make sure everything turns from blue to black. Now you've seen me extrude before by just using the tools on the right click menu. Another option would be Instant 3D or all of your traditional tools are of course on a ribbon style command manager at the top of SolidWorks. Let's just take this enclosed contoured area and do a traditional extrude, but I'd like to make this a mid-plane extrusion as I did before. I'll have it come up just a bit short from the sides as well to allow some clearance. In fact, I need more clearance to get that pin inside, so I'm gonna reuse the same sketch in an extrude cut feature. Just going mid-plane here and adding a total thickness ought to add that clearance cut for me. Now the pin that connects through here that wasn't incorporated before is actually kind of a complex hole. One side is larger than the other. When you get in those situations, you can use the advanced hole wizard, which allows, allows additional tools for taking care of multi-stepped holes, somewhere where you might have multiple clearances, even threaded connections. And again, these of, co of course can be saved as favorites. So great for shoulder screws, or here I just need to add that shoulder screw clearance. I can choose my far side and near side faces, and it's as simple as another one point on a sketch. I'll wake up my center point to know I'm absolutely centered, and I'm done. The geometry and the manufacturing info are there. Now speaking of manufacturing, I, I probably should make this uh, a little bit easier to work with. Let's add some fillets and chamfers. I'll just multi-select these edges here and use a constant two millimeter fillet. Easy enough. Similar to using that tool, we could add a chamfer. By just choosing faces, all of my tangent edges will be selected and I can knock off those hard edges and give us something that really looks better as well. Now besides just manufacturing and geometry, I want to add additional information such as what material is made out of. And notice here I have all of the material properties to do weight and balance and strength calculations built in. This is going to be a 6061 aluminum alloy easy enough to apply, and I want that information to be shared, so I'm adding it as a property to the part as well. You can see the material 6061 is already here, and we can add additional custom properties, really anything you'd like to be pulled by other areas of SolidWorks or other programs, like who drew this, what date we drew it on, how much does it weigh, what revision, really any of that information is stored right here inside the file. Now I'm connecting a traditional SolidWorks desktop install to the cloud. And I have the option to save as I always would locally in any file type. And here I'm just saving into what's called the local working cache. To really share this file with others, that's when I bring in the 3D Experience platform, which runs in the task pane just on the right side of SolidWorks. 
I can see I currently have this file reserved, no one else can work on it, that it's been locally modified, and by choosing save in this task pane, I'm now sharing this information with anyone else who's connected through the platform or who might wanna know that I'm working on these designs. I'll go ahead and save this to the cloud, but I'm gonna leave that key, that locked reservation here, so that no one else could open it up and, and work on it right now. They could simply only open it to view. Of course, along with a part, we need to make a drawing. So I'm gonna choose a template here as well and just make a quick drawing since none exists of this new part. The task pane also provides a view palette so I can see what views have been used and just drag and drop and immediately start projecting a front, top, right, and an isometric view is gonna look good here as well. You can automatically import some annotations like these center lines. I actually don't need them here and I think this view would also look better shaded with edges. These others might look better in a hidden lines visible style. You can see the child's automatically follow the parent, making that really quick. Now I mentioned you could automatically import annotations. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do from my entire model, dimensions and whole callouts in with one click. Now these are great, they're parametric. I could physically change the model with these, but they usually require a small amount of cleanup if you use that kind of automated tool. That's no problem though. I can just drag these around to where I want them on the screen. Maybe I'll flip a couple arrowheads or reattach some arrows to some outside radiuses and do some minimal human filtering here, a little bit of cleanup work. Notice those whole wizard and advanced whole wizard callouts are already proper, perfect for what I want for manufacturing. But this chamfer callout actually doesn't look beautiful to me. I'm gonna use one of the more traditional dimensioning tools here. You can see you can do everything from chains to ordinates. Here I'm just gonna add a chamfer dimension. When you use these dimensions, you get some nice positioning tools to show you exactly where these are, are placed. So they're gonna come in with the right spacing and connect to other dimensions at the right distance. I actually think this one will look a little bit better if I hang it off of the small angled edge of that chamfer. There, that looks pretty good to me. I'd also like to point out some of the custom property mapping in these files. Take a look at the title block. It already knows the part number, the revision, the material, who drew it and what date. That goes back to that custom property mapping, that data that's shared in between these SOLIDWORKS files. And of course, if I wanna share these with other people, all I need to do is access the task pane. What I'd like to do right now is actually search up the old lower bracket because while I incorporated the pin, I didn't attach it to the foot. And using the same 3D experience task pane tools here, I can search all of my files in my database, quickly find the old lower bracket so we can open it up and, and take a look at it. Now I always tell people in SOLIDWORKS, if you're doing something twice, you ought to give us a call here at MLC because there's a way to do it once. And I can see those old features in that part because I didn't branch or make a revision of that part, I need to recreate those. Of course, I don't really want to. I don't want to take the time to redraw all those holes. So I'm just going to position my different SOLIDWORKS windows here. So I'm actually looking at both geometries at the same time. What I can do is take advantage of the tree here and just copy these features from one part to another. Simply select the cutouts that I want to move over and drag and drop easy as that. They have outside relationships, which I could delete, or in this case, I'm going to leave them dangling. So it'll be in the model somewhere, but broken. So let's take a look at that. I can also tell that my hole came in off centered. So there's a little bit of cleanup work to do. It's probably in the very initial cutout where I've left those relationships just hanging. And indeed this brown color warns me yeah, this is no longer connected, but that's no problem. I can simply reorient my, my view here and drag and drop to make a new relationship. Everything turned black, so again, I know my sketch is fully defined and everything looks nice and centered. Since I made a design change, I expect this change to update everywhere it's used. And indeed, looking at the drawing, we can see that this now incorporates the new cutout. I should add a few more annotations to it as well, like a center mark. And here I'll use a center line tool and just select a view to add any missing center lines. Now, we do need to add information about these cuts. So I'm gonna use the same tool and throw this info in. Although I'm not sure adding it all to the same view is really the best way to go here. It does look a little bit cluttered. So 
I'm going to take a different approach. I'll just add maybe a centering dimension over on this one view. And instead of adding all the model items to the existing stuff here, I'm going to make a little bit more room on my paper. And let's add a section view here that goes right through the center of that cut. It's easy enough to do with these tools. They even make relationships with the center of the hole. So if we ever have a design update, I think my drawing is going to need a uh, minimal touch up. I'll just place this over on the left and maybe flip the direction of those arrows. That looks pretty good already. And to add the manufacturing information just as before, I'll simply insert the model items from my entire model just into that one view. What you've just seen me accomplish started in a 3D experience platform from a social media post and moved directly into SolidWorks where I created a part and drawing to complete a design. As I used these different intuitive tools and connected tools of SolidWorks, data management was happening all the time in the background. So let's jump back into this 3D experience task pane and share this drawing with others. The drawing that I've got open is hasn't even been saved yet. And if I go directly to a save in the task pane, it will first get copied into my local working cache so I don't have any file references problems even if I decide to work locally. Of course, once it's there, it will immediately move into saving this up into the cloud where I can add revision comments about the new lower bracket design that I've created. I can decide where it's going into on the cloud and if I want to keep the lock or the reservation of these files and continue to work on them here locally. That looks pretty good for the drawing. I think my design, at least on the drawing side, is pretty much done, but I definitely need to get this assembled into that final assembly. So I'm just going to close the unnecessary files and reorganize my windows so I'm looking at the part and the assembly. A simple way to do really advanced mates inside of SOLIDWORKS is dragging and dropping between two windows. This is nothing new. I'm actually adding a pin and hole mate here, which gives me a concentric and a coincident mate at the exact same time. And now I've plugged that new design in. Now you can still rotate about that last screw hole. So another way to do that is hold down your alt key and just drag two faces together as I'm doing here to add a concentric mate. I don't even need to open up the traditional tools. Now these may appear lined up, but I deleted that shoulder pin, so things are not really connected. So I need to find a new shoulder screw to plug in place. And again, I'm going to do this using the powerful search tools that are built in across a 3D experience platform. Here I'll search for a shoulder M6 size, and I've got a low profile and a standard, and I'm just going to drag and drop in a standard tool from my library, which comes from the cloud and gets placed right into SolidWorks. Again, I'll quickly drag and drop for a pin and hole mate to get this in spot. And finally, I'll just use a quick mate by using the control key to select two cylindrical faces and make a concentric mate. SolidWorks seems to read my actions and clicks and know exactly which tool I want. Hey, that looks okay, except for this old uh, side bracket here. It has a really small clearance hole. I'm gonna increase that so that nobody has a problem trying to tighten down or access that shoulder screw that I just dropped in place. So I'm starting to modify parts and designs that already exist, not just create new stuff. Like the clearance for the motion that was also at the top end of this knee assembly. It looks pretty good right now, but let's zoom in because I knew there was some sort of interference going on. There's also two ways that you can assemble this and using breadcrumbs, again, offered right at my fingertips, I can change a concentric mate in between this bolted connection to the adjacent hole. Now you can see there's sort of a new position for the top mount here, but I still need this to move through its complete range of motion. It appears that it's working pretty nice, but I know that in use there was an issue. So let's take a closer look at this with some of the evaluation tools. One you should absolutely be aware of is interference detection, which we can run through the whole assembly or just look at specific parts. Here I'm gonna to group together fasteners and components that normally have interferences, and I can see, oh, these components should not be interfering. This is not <laughs> something that normally should interfere, so I would have a problem with this. A section view maybe allows us to see this a little more clearly. So I can see, oh, there's two to three components here that in the top position are completely overlapping. 
I wonder how far I can move these before they start to interfere. And if you ever get on the assembly command manager, actually underneath move component is where you can turn on physical dynamics and collision detection, allowing me to drag these components or pick specific components to drag and have them stop where they collide. Let's look at this one more time, but this time I'm only gonna look between a few components instead of the entire assembly, and I'm gonna have these stop when they collide. Checking the stop at collision box, I can move them into the absolute position, and then I'm not allowed to drag any further. All right, I think I have a good idea now of what's going on. There's simply not enough room, but double clicking on the part brings out the design dimensions Let's try increasing this angle. As long as the component was made with pretty good design intent, it should open the right way, and indeed, that parametric info is here in SolidWorks, and now I can move through that full range of motion without any clearance problems, no matter how this is assembled. That's looking nice to me, and uh, I should probably take care of the rest of the manufacturing info that goes along, such as exploded views. Exploded capa capabilities in SOLIDWORKS are really powerful. They come right with animations, so as soon as you've made an exploded view, well, you've already made a movie of the explosion or collapse of this assembly as well. And how about smart explode lines? With one click, I'm also able to connect these dashed lines in between all these components. Let's just very quickly edit this explosion to pull out the shoulder screw and lower the lower bracket that I've added in. I think we've seen plenty of mating and work inside of SOLIDWORKS, so I'm just gonna move these two components and probably move on to the drawing, the actual manufacturing print. I think that looks pretty good. One way to look up the drawing is again, use those powerful search capabilities. Even searching by the name of this assembly, I can see all components that include that, whether in their description or their file name, such as the drawing right here. I'll just drag and drop this, again, downloading it to my local cache, simply as drag and dropping, and I can see this looks pretty good, except I had a balloon that was pointing at the old lower bracket and is now out of date. Well, that's not a big problem. I can just drag it and attach it over to the new one. Of course, the information is shared and up to date in the bill of materials. So what's been managing all this data in the background, of course, is 3D experience. And I'm feeling pretty good about the work I've done here on the drawing and on the assembly, but some of these things are in different workflow states. You can see as I'm saving this drawing, it's in an in-work state, meaning anyone can work on it, but many of these components are in a released state, which doesn't allow me to make edits. It's actually not a big deal. For the things that are in an in-work state, I've already got them reserved, or I could choose to reserve any modified data that I don't have control over, but I'm warned that some things here are already released. They're already in a maturity state that I can't work on. So I'm simply gonna create new revisions of these components by checking the box and move those from a revision A to a revision B. All the information I'd expect from a data management system is here. And when I choose save, all of my changes are updated to the cloud and revisions are bumped on the assembly and the right side components that I've changed. What you've just seen me do is use the life cycle and revision management tools of 3D Experience from inside of SOLIDWORKS. I use this same interface to search my platform and retrieve documents. And all of these tool sets require no expensive servers to install or maintain. Let's say we want to formalize this process a little bit more. I'm going to go ahead and close these existing documents and I want to show you that I have all of the access to the same tools from my web browser from inside of SOLIDWORKS. I'm just going to log into another 3D Experience tab of my task pane, and you'll see that I have a wide variety of tools, the same one I could access through the web. I've got a couple favorite apps, including collaborative tasks. Now these are tasks that could have been created by a project manager or someone else on the project, and I can see two are in a to-do state and are assigned to me specifically, including assembling this link. This link was created by someone else in the X-Design tool, but needs to be added to the assembly and have some weight reduced. They've included a PDF for context, made this a to-do workflow state and assigned it to me, and then attached a few uh, components as well. I'm going to move this to in-work so my manager immediately knows that I've seen it and I'm starting it on the task, 
And I'd actually like to take this time to show you another tool that I use a lot, which is called bookmarks. A lot like a folder structure because in addition to searching the platform, I'm often using tools to browse it as well. Here I've got some folders I use to manage files in my different projects. So digging right in, I can find that VF2 foot assembly that was in the collaborative tasks. Just like moving from the 3D Experience platform through a web browser, I can just drag and drop into SOLIDWORKS to download and open this assembly. Now how about that link? I'm going to do the same thing because that link wasn't created in SOLIDWORKS. It was actually created in XDesign. So as I download it, it's now opening up through the 3D interconnect capabilities of SOLIDWORKS and I can transfer in between any of those tools. It looks like a pretty good link to me, it just needs to be assembled into this foot assembly. I happen to know where it goes near the heel. So once again, I'll tile my windows and take advantage of some more of the drag and, drum func drag and drop functionality that you get by moving in between two screens. A simple pin and hole mate puts these two together and now I can maximize and finish up the mating condition here. One more quick mate for concentric ought to get this fully defined into position. Now this is a pretty slick assembly and there's already actually hardware that's holding these components together. I think we've taken a look at enough mating inside of SOLIDWORKS now, so I'm gonna show the existing hardware and let's quickly test this motion out by making one of the sub-assemblies flexible and then dragging these components around. Yeah, even though the link is fairly large, I think that's gonna work out well. Maybe one last step here would be to mirror this component so that we have a link on both sides of the assembly. I'll just take the component, the right plane, and add a quick mirror feature so that we have two links inside this foot assembly. That looks good. I think I'm ready to share this design with others and maybe move over to some more of the cloud design tools. Switching back to what I've got open, again, a simple right click and save inside of the task pane will move these files up to the cloud. Again, I wanna check what items have I not reserved. It looks like I was working read only with assembly, but it's easy enough to simply reserve any of that modified data that's in a workflow state that I have full permissions to. Most of these items are unchanged, so we don't need to pass that back and forth. So I'll just hit save and send just the data that I've modified. There's a lot of data here to be tracked and the task pane itself is customizable in what data is being shown in what order. One column I'd like you to check out is called CAD Master, which shows us what program the file was initially created in. Now, of course, we can do some editing and direct editing to those files here in SOLIDWORKS, but since these were components that were made in X shape, let's take a look at it over there. I'll just switch over to a design tab of my 3D Experience platform and refresh my collaborative task uh, widget, which is also available here. I can see my assembly link has been moved to InWork because I'm working on it, and I need to also remove some material to reduce the weight of this linkage. I'll keep it easy this time and just drag and drop from the attachments right here, and I'm gonna put this into a relational app because one thing I wanna do is see where is this link used. Well, it's used in that VF2 foot assembly. That link was just created by myself, it's also bookmarked in one of my folders. So it's not used in any other projects. So it's pretty much safe to edit. I'm gonna use that same drag and drop and just move this really from any of my windows into XDesign. Now this is the first 100% cloud tool that we've looked at. You can access this through any device with an internet browser. It does not require a local install. And what I wanna do is add some features here to reduce weight. Now this is a lot like SOLIDWORKS, except your command manager and tool set is down on the bottom and has similar tabs. You're also gonna find a lot of tools appear right at my mouse cursor, so it is watching what I'm doing like starting a new sketch. I can use familiar sketch tools like convert entities. So I'm gonna borrow the outline of this curve and just change its extents. I'll use the L hotkey to turn on a line and horizontal and vertical relationships are made automatically as I sketch. Changing one line to a center line, I could make use of a mirror functionality. And let's just take my sketch entities and mirror them around that center line. That looks good and 
because I'm, I always sketch this way. I'm gonna add some additional relationships like horizontal between these points and watch things turn from blue to black. That's all you need to do to ensure that everything becomes fully defined and you haven't forgotten any dimensions. Choosing a line and an edge, the dimension tool is offered and I'll just add one more to cut away material. So I'm gonna jump over to the features and, and fire one up, um, although I clicked on sweep. But actually it doesn't matter here in X-Design, even though I meant to hit extrude, I can change the feature type. You can even do this after the fact, after the feature is used. Errors and warning messages will pop up to tell you, hey, that feature is not appropriate to use here, like trying to cut using this sketch in a solid body. I need to switch this over to an extrude cut using a surface body, and it has to be through all. Now everything looks happy, I'll just flip the side to cut and hit the green check to see that material removed. Of course, I want this to look pretty professional and a good way to, to act like I know what I'm doing here is add fillets to everything. So I'm gonna use the same type of selection tools available to me here to choose all of these edges for a 10 millimeter fillet. That looks pretty nice and we ought to knock off the hard edges on either side of this as well with a chamfer. Similar to SOLIDWORKS, Tangent Propagation lets me choose one edge and that chamfer continues all the way around the part. That looks pretty good. I'm done here. I'll go ahead and hit save to share this with everyone else. Now I think I'm done with this task as well, so I'll just hit the green check and move that to completed so my manager can be notified that that work was done. But it wasn't the only task that someone you know, created and gave to me. There also needs to be a cover on that VF2 foot assembly, kind of like the top of a shoe. It's in the to-do workflow state. It's assigned to me. It has some PDF attachments for context, but I'll just move this task into, into work and get started. The cover needs to fit on that VF2 assembly. So let's drag and drop it. I can see it's here in the relations app. I'll go ahead and use that by dragging and dropping it into X-Design and opening it up. I've also full screen things here a bit so we get more real estate when we're dealing with more parts and you'll notice a very similar tree structure to working inside of SOLIDWORKS. You don't need to think about this as a separate part and assembly environment, but do notice that the changes that I've made to the geometry of that link are already here and already up to date. Now, I'd like to create that new part right inside of here. So on the assembly command manager, I can create new components and I'm gonna create a new one and insert it right into this assembly structure. The new component appears immediately at the bottom of the tree and I can rename it and get to work. I'll give it the name cover since it's a foot cover and double clicking on it activates it. So I'm now working specifically on that part while the rest of my components in the assembly go transparent to make things more obvious. This is a very ergonomic structure here. So what I'm gonna do is switch to X shape. I even have a sheet metal tool and I access these just by pushing the X key on my keyboard. I don't actually need to go to a different app or different environment here, a different tab. Just pushing X, I've now switched from the X design tool to X shape. I'm in a different cloud modeling app now. There's a few different tool sets at the bottom, such as subdivisions. X shape is a lot like a modeling clay. You can start with subdivision items. I'm gonna start with a cube here and decide how many divisions it has in which directions. I'm gonna keep things pretty simple for myself. So let's just have this with three uh, divisions in one direction. I think it's scaled to about the right size to start with and I can use these drag handles to adjust. This is a lot like pushing and pulling and modeling clay. And so while I do this, I think I'll actually start with symmetry activated. So whatever I do on one side looks really perfect on the other. Just choose a center plane for this and symmetry is activated and ready to go. I'm also gonna need some hard edges. So there are some parts of this are pris that are going to be prismatic and need to mate up with bolts and screws. So I'm gonna choose the different edges and offered right by my tooltip is the ability to crease those and create a flat edge. Now I'm already starting to get the overall shape. And what I can do is box select different nodes here on these divisions and just push and pull this like shaping clay to where I want it to be. Notice you can adjust these triads and control if they're moving by XYZ coordinates or if they're aligned to a different angle. 
We can adjust the rotation of these spots as well. And really it's great for industrial design. It's really like molding something. You can imagine how long it might take to surface model this type of shape in SolidWorks. In fact, I want to be more advanced and actually align these to a simple sketch. I'll just drag in a curve and more than I can push and pull, this becomes an even swoopier, more ergonomic shape. I think that's looking pretty good. Now that was made extremely fast and I want to make it look even more like I did surface modeling here. So I'm going to turn off symmetry and just push and pull a little bit more. Really being an artist here, see what my coworkers think about this foot design. Maybe match the bottom sole just slightly. Of course, this really isn't supposed to just be a solid body. I need to have this shelled out. I need to think about how it's going to be manufactured, not just how it's going to look and, and how it's going to be designed. So let's save this component and then I'll open it up in its own window. So I don't have to see, you know, the extra clutter uh, of the other components that are in the whole assembly. Still working inside X shape here. Let's start off by shelling this component because there are similar features in X shape that you would likely already know how to use if you've experienced SOLIDWORKS or X design. Tangent propagation lets me choose one face here for the shelling and I can do this in either direction. I can choose to be left with a shell body or do this in both directions. In fact, I've even got custom thickness op options if the walls aren't all a standard thickness. Now that looks pretty good, but is it manufacturable? This is meant to be injection molded, so let's run a quick draft analysis measuring just one degree of draft away from the XZ plane. Wow, it looks like I have spots that are not only less than one degree, um, they're actually a negative draft. So yeah, this is going to be a problem when we try to make it out of plastics. I'm going to immediately edit that original subdivision feature and notice draft analysis is still turned on. This means that as I push and pull and choose some items to move around, I can I just instantly tell when I've achieved that one degree of draft, when I've got a positive draft angle. Let's take both of these nodes and move them a little to the inside. And now it looks like I'm getting something that at least will be able to injection mold, shouldn't cause a short shot and is already shelled out to the proper thickness. Turning off the draft analysis, I think I'm really done with this part and it's a pretty good looking cover. I can go check out my collaborative task and definitely tell them, hey, I finished this work. I'll go ahead and move this over to completed so everyone's notified that the cover exists. Actually, let's even add the cover as a deliverable. So if my managers are in here looking at this and they need to open up the file and check it out, maybe head into some plastics injection mold simulation. All they need to do is drag and drop. I'll go ahead and complete this task so everyone knows it's done, but let's also communicate with people who aren't on the engineering team. Here's my foot assembly where I've designed a cover and a link, and I'm just gonna drag it and move it over to my community tab on 3D Experience and into 3D Play. 3D Play is a viewer for all sorts of file types that allows me to do things like rotate, navigate, I can measure, mark up. Here I have my assembly looks pretty good with the new cover, but I might want to hide a few components. One click gets them hidden, or I can invert that selection, or simply turn this off so everything's showing again. Or if we're looking at those inside clearances, it might make sense to take a section view and look internally where things are actually having a collision issue. Even exploded views are capable here, and I want to point out that no exploded view has ever been created in this assembly. This exploded view is just something that 3D Play is capable of doing with CAD assemblies. But the reason I came here was to do some markup. So I'm simply going to crudely draw an oval out here. Even that looks nicer on this platform. Maybe ellipse around the link. And let's add a bit of text as well, just to show off the new design um, and respond to my different community posts. From right inside of 3D Play and just about any of these tools really, I could make a new post to the community, but why don't we save this as a screenshot and then I can reply to an existing post. Taking a look in the community, I can see we were lacking the foot and the link design. So I'm just gonna share this with any stakeholder out there, anyone who had a visual idea for this, 
and ask them to check out the design that I've created. I'll leave a note for them and then just drag and drop my screenshot in. And now anyone with access to the community can see my new design idea. You've just seen me move between three different design tools using collaborative tasks, bookmarks, a relational explorer, and 3D play to facilitate my work. These tightly integrated tools and the customizable environment of the 3D experience allow you to choose the workflow that is most efficient for you. I hope my workflow gives you an idea of one way that these 3D experience tools could work together. There are many additional capabilities included in just these bundles, which I didn't have time for today. If connecting SOLIDWORKS to the cloud and taking advantage of all that the 3D experience platform offers is something you're interested in, please reach out to myself or any of us here at MLC and we're happy to help.